What's up guys, Mixed by Jocelyn here, back with another video of Mixed Up. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can turn your stereo mix into a Dolby Atmos mix in Logic Pro X. Let's get cracking. Oh. Okay, cool. So you've probably seen on the internet a bunch by now about Dolby Atmos mixing and how it's kind of taken over the industry because streaming platforms like Apple Music, Tidal and Amazon have all adopted the format and are really pushing to try and make it the new standard for listening to music on their platforms. And you're wondering how you can get in on the action. And with Logic Pro X, it is way more simpler than you might think. Simple. It couldn't be easier. And what I've decided to create is a three part video where I'm gonna show you how to set up your mix into Dolby, how to mix your track in Dolby, and then how to export your track in Dolby. Everything you need to know to start releasing Dolby Atmos mixes and Dolby Atmos versions of your mixes. With that being said, a few things you need before you can get started. You'll need an updated version of Logic Pro X and you'll need a pair of headphones. I'm going to be using the AirPod Pro Max for this, but alternatively, you can use other over-ear headphones. You might already have a Dolby Atmos dedicated speaker system in your room, but I'm not quite sure why you'd be on that video if you did, because you probably know how to set up your mixes at this point. Well, what are you doing in here? But that being said, you can get started in Dolby Atmos that easily just with Logic Pro and a pair of headphones. But enough talking, let's get into Logic and I'm gonna show you guys how to set up your Dolby Atmos mix in Logic Pro X. What we have here is a blank project and you can basically set your Dolby mix up in a couple of different ways. My preferred way is to export the stems, the, the wet stems, and then re-import them into a whole new project. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video teaching you how to export your stems, which I will link below. Alternatively, you can make an alternate edit of your existing mix, which Harry's gonna show you on the screen now on how to do, so then you don't have to export the stems. That being said, I'm not quite sure how well the mix will translate, being that all of your plugins will stay on the project file and if they are 7.1 compatible. Because at this point, I believe most of the plugins that you use to create your Dolby Atmos mix will have to be 7.1 compatible, which is basically the max output system of speakers that we get when we're doing a Dolby Atmos mix. Another point to be made before we get into it is at the moment, you can't release Dolby Atmos mixes as standalones. They have to be an alternate version of an existing stereo mix. So before you do your Dolby Atmos mix, you'll have to finalize your stereo mix and master beforehand and then basically convert that mix into a Dolby mix. And then you would release both at the same time on the DSPs, which is the digital streaming platforms. But enough talking. If you have any questions on that stuff and then you want more detail, please let me know in the comments that being said, if you are enjoying this video and you're finding the information useful, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. But let's get on with exactly how you set up and turn your Logic Mix into a Dolby Atmos Mix. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is reach for my stems. I have mine bounced here. This is a song that I've mixed a bunch on this channel. It's called I Wanna by Toby featuring Notes. Really cool song, I'll leave the link down below. Although we don't have a Dolby version of this mix, you know, maybe leave a comment, leave a like if you wanna hear one and I can send it over to them. But I am gonna be mixing one over the course of this video. So could be interesting, maybe it will get released. And once you have the stems, all you wanna do is click and grab them and basically import them. Again, the reason why I like to use the wet stems rather than converting my mix project into a Dolby Atmos project is because I'm not quite certain on how my plugins will react and if they will all work and if they'll sound the same. So I'd much rather them be printed in and then I can work off of the print. And it also is gonna help with CPU and keeping the projects clean and a little bit tidier. Okay, cool. So now we have the stems imported, it is relatively easy to set up your mix. A couple of things I would suggest doing is going into your settings and then audio, and then putting up your buffer size just because it can be quite CPU intensive mixing in Dolby. Once that's done, all we have to do is we come over to mix and where it says Dolby Atmos, we click Dolby Atmos and we have to basically turn on spectral audio. 
it will give us a little prompt to say, do you want to convert this project into 7.12? That's the max output, as we discussed earlier, for a speaker system that we're going to be rendering to through the Dolby renderer. We're going to hit OK, and it's going to change everything. And then one thing you'll notice is that all of our pans have changed. And essentially, that's one of the main parts of Dolby Atmos is we're going to be taking our mixed stems and panning them around a much larger spatial field. Also, you'll notice that a new master output has been created with this Atmos plugin. We can click this. Now, this is is our Dolby renderer. It's the built-in version that Logic has created. And what you're gonna wanna have, if you're using headphones especially, to mix in Dolby, is you're gonna wanna either have the Dolby renderer selected or the Apple renderer selected. The difference between these is Apple renderer is basically giving you the playback of what it's gonna sound like in iTunes and Apple Music, because they have their own spatial audio settings. So it creates a virtual room. So it does sound slightly different to the Dolby renderer. The Dolby renderer is gonna be what it sounds like on all other DSP. So it's good whilst you're mixing to flick between the two, making sure that your mix sounds good on both. Also, what you're going to want to do is come back over to your settings, audio, and you're going to want to make sure that your output is selected as your headphones. So in my case, where I'm using the AirPod Maxes, I'm going to want to make sure my AirPod Maxes are selected. So that's going to be my output. And then I can hear everything properly within the Dolby mix. And now you're essentially ready to start mixing this track in Dolby Atmos. There's a few more steps until you can get a finalized Dolby mix though, but we're gonna go into much more detail in the upcoming videos about that. Next video, we'll actually be mixing the track and we'll be talking about the different types of panners you get when it comes to mixing in Dolby Atmos. This is the surround panner. Also, another panner that we're gonna be using is a 3D object panner. So we'll be going into detail about all of that in the next video. So if you want that video, please give it a like, leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and let me know if you you've decided to start mixing Dolby Atmos as well, send me a DM on Instagram maybe at mixbyjossin and I'll be happy to help you with any information you need. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Safe.